very much for joining us live on Holy Hells Radio. This is your champion station, your super duper radio station. My name is Adabes Montgomery Somoa. Today, I'm so excited. We want to wish all the ladies, all the women, a happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Uh -huh. <laughs> we thank God for such a privilege. And um, we have Mr. Isaac Pinto, the man in charge of the technical department. He's also our CEO. He's doubling for us today. And then um, tonight, we have a very special guest. He's uh, somebody who is, I mean, blessed with a lot of wisdom. God has really blessed him, and tonight we are blessed to have him here. Before I introduce him, we also have our own uh, Mrs. Judith Anor here, uh, Mrs. Holiko, Mrs. <laughs> Baby Eunice. Yeah, she is also here giving us moral support. Tonight, people of God, I'm privileged, I'm honored to have a wonderful man who is, I mean, I mean, he's knowledgeable in so many things, and he just likes to, I mean, he doesn't even like me introducing him this way, but I will go ahead and do it. Yeah, he's knowledgeable in so many things. And tonight, we are going to talk about rapture. Rapture. So we have Mr. David Ano here. Welcome. Right. Thank you, sir. God bless you so God much. You. What is rapture? So, mm -hmm. to, to sum it up, rapture <clears throat> comes directly from um, the promise that was made to us by Jesus in uh, John chapter 14, mm -hmm. 1 to 3 where it talked about the fact that I go to prepare a place for you. When I'm done, I'll, I'll come back and I'll receive you mm. unto myself. So that receiving unto himself, where we will be changed and meet up with him in the skies for him to go to where he has been with us, which is heaven. Mm -hmm. that, that is what rapture is all about in, in the nutshell. Okay. Okay. So... It's just about, okay, so when rapture happens, uh, who, who is going to be raptured? Let me start from there. Um, so <laughs> rapture is actually one of those areas that's uh, extremely controversial. One thing that, you know, everybody agrees on is that rapture involves the church, okay. the body of Christ. So those who have accepted God as their Lord and personal Savior mm -hmm. with the heart, confessed it with the mouth. The church, the bride of Christ, that's who is going to be raptured. Okay. And when you talk about the bride of Christ, what is the bride of Christ? What does it mean, the bride of Christ? So the bride of Christ. So the main reason, well, one of the, one of the reasons why Jesus came to earth mm -hmm. was to find himself a bride. Wow. To find himself a bride. And so he came was obedient unto the cross, died, resurrected. And one of the outcomes of that was that there was going to be a people, and this is something that when you read the Bible, it was hidden. Okay. The Bible says it was hidden from the foundations a of the mystery. world. A mystery. So all through the Old Testament, you'd, you'd see gaps, right? For instance, when you read uh, Daniel chapter 9, it will talk about, um, you know, 69 weeks mm -hmm. from the time uh, that the uh, declaration was made to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple to the time when the Messiah will be revealed will be 69 weeks. That is from Daniel. That's from Daniel. And that's 69 weeks of years, which was 483 years. Okay. Now, after that, you realize that he talks about things that would So, happen. yeah, to make it simple, so mm -hmm. 69 by 7, right? 69, yes. Multiply by 7. Exactly. Okay. 69 multiplied by 7. 60, 70 multiplied by 7 is 490. Subtract 7 from that, you have 483. Okay. Um, and I don't want to go too much into that, but if you read, it's uh, Daniel chapter 9, I think from verse, when you read from verse, I think from verse 24, you'd see this. Mm -hmm. Now, you realize that there is an inherent gap there okay. before it talks about, you know, the tribulation and other things. So, you realize that the church is something that took, Satan by surprise. Okay. Took the Jews by surprise. Took everyone by, by surprise. But when Christ died and resurrected, and initially when the Jews rejected him, it was according to plan, according to the plan of God, mm. so that it could be opened up through their disobedience to the Gentiles. Gentiles. Okay. Now, the church, the church is... 
Now, when you read the Bible, the Bible says that he created in him a new man, bridging the gap and taking away the mm -hmm. enmity. Mm -hmm. And so, anybody who, the Gentiles, Jews, whoever it is, the grace was shed upon us, all the same. Anybody who accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, in their hearts, confessed with their mouth, became a part of this church, of this bride of Christ. So just by having faith in Jesus. By having faith in Jesus, confessing him with a heart. And it's just it's not just a matter. And there's an important part there, mm -hmm. right? Believing with a heart. Okay. Not just believing with the mind. Yeah. Believing with the heart, confessing with the mouth. So do you have to confess before a church, a gathering, or you can just confess it before? I mean, just uh, pray to God in your or lonely moments or your quiet moments, and then you just confess that's that's an interesting that's an interesting question mm -hmm. i'll just talk about my point of view okay my point of view now i believe that the word the word here is believing right mm -hmm. and with your heart and so believing with your heart confessing with your mouth is a process but i believe that it can be in the comfort of your own home wherever it is mm -hmm. as long as you believe with the heart now the, the the Bible talks about the fact that if you confess me before others, I'll and right. all of that. That I don't think that relates directly to being saved. Right. Directly to being, as far as being saved is concerned, it's it's something that the Holy Spirit does, and so it can be in the comfort of your home. It has nothing to do with the people around you. Right. It has nothing to do with the people around you. After that, obviously, we have a mandate to confess. Okay. Christ. Okay. Wow. To wow. Today I know we are going to learn a, a whole lot of things because this is an area that and many pastors don't even want to go. Yeah. I mean, this is an area that is shrouded in some secrecy. I don't know because it's a little hard. People don't like things that are hard. And that is why the book of Revelation is like, it's not part of the uh, New Testament. <laughs> it's not part of the Bible. People, yeah. you hardly, you can go a whole year without, uh, I mean, no, anybody quoting from them <laughs> because the mysteries and all that, people don't want to bother themselves. Yeah. What if the Jews had accepted Jesus? What 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 would have happened? Because if he came with the kingdom. Mm. So one day I was reading something. I was thinking if they had accepted him, then the kingdom would have come. That means the millennium would have begun. It's it's so interesting how uh -huh. how that is. But yes, you're you're kind of right there, because when this is the thing they they were expecting. A king, uh -huh. an already made king. king, because all through the, all all through the um, Old Testament, you realize that most mm -hmm. of all the things. I mean, the first coming of Jesus was definitely talked about, but you realize that there is a, fr a fraction of, of of about one to eight where the second coming was talked about, and mm -hmm. so the Jews' mentality, first the Jews to the Jews, salvation was pretty much delivering them from. Bondage, bondage as far like physical bondage right. on the earth being under so at that point in time they were under the romans right mm -hmm. and so somebody was coming who would deliver them from the romans and reinstitute the uh, um, the, the throne of david right. and that's what they were expecting and so they, they missed it but it was all in the plan of god so the romans actually um going to uh, uh colonize them became something like a block in their eyes because it was all about getting out of the tyranny of these people. Exactly. So when we were talking about special things for them, it was all about this romance getting out of their neck. That's what it was. Oh. So <laughs> so that means this romance really caused them a lot. Definitely. Because I, if yeah. it had let's say they were just there. I mean, I always want to think hypothetically and just mm -hmm. go into some of this stuff. Let's say if they were just there without any romance occupation in their in their land, they would have easily have recognized Christ. Oh yeah. And their, their focus would have been on the spiritual rather than on the physical. I mean, that could also be part of God's plan. It was definitely a part of God's yeah. plan. And so you see Apostle Paul say, say that they were concluded in disbelief. That's right. So that we, we suddenly may be able to right. become that's a, a, of the commonwealth. That's, true. that's yeah. true. That's true. So if they had accepted it, it would have you know, accepted him. The whole thing would have centered in Israel. Mm -hmm. And then probably the millennium would have begun and then they would just have been enjoying yeah. Everybody will be excluded. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I want to make a point uh -huh. here that <clears throat> there is there's a there's a theory that kind of has been going around about the fact that because Israel 
disobeyed, now <laughs> God has completely just like made us the new Israel. The new Israel, and now Israel's no longer matter. And it's 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 a very dangerous thing. It's I uh, I believe they call it what um, <clears throat> replacement theory. replacement theory. Thank yeah. you very much. Mm -hmm. And the replacement theory is is dangerous because it makes God a liar. Right. That Look means God was lying to the Israelites. He was lying to the Israelites. God made some fantastic promises. As Extremely long as there was fantastic. a fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so he was lying to them. <laughs> right. And if you are serving such a God who is a liar, how, I mean, in quotes, mm -hmm. how can you believe that he's going to be faithful to you? Exactly. Someone who breaks his promises, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you should, we should know that the, 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 you know, as far as God's promises, mm -hmm. and, and Paul, Paul talking about that said that the, the giftings, of God and promises of God are without irrevocable. repentance, yes, irrevocable. Right. right. Yes. And so that's 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 you know, definitely through them we've been able to right receive life. But let's not for one second think that God has forgotten about Israel. All right, there is a purpose, but definitely we have not replaced them, yeah. so to speak. They also are very much a part of God's plan and God's promises to them will be fulfilled. And that is why you could obviously see that the, uh, the Jebutites, the Hittites, all those people, <laughs> they are all gone. But this is still there. Yeah. <laughs> How come all these people, all the names that when you go into the Old Testament, you see, you cannot, you cannot see them now. But you can still see Israel mm. as a nation. So mm. that shows that God is still dealing with them. And there's going to be a day that Israel is going to come to their senses. Just like Joseph's brethren, the brethren of Joseph, his brothers, right. came to their senses and realized that that was Joseph. Uh -huh. One day, they are going to see Jesus as the true Messiah. And that will be the, a turning point in their lives. Very big yeah. So Israel still occupies a very important part of God's plan. They definitely And they, God is working out something that in the 70th week. In the 70th week of that. Now, I don't know, maybe, let me, let me sort of summarize what these uh, weeks are. So... <clears throat> Um, in, in Daniel 9, uh -huh. right, uh -huh. God revealed unto Daniel. So you realize that Daniel was, it's called the interrupted prayer. He was praying because by Jeremiah's prophecy, he knew that there were, seven, there were 70 years when they were going to be in captivity. captivity. He okay. took it very literally till the um, angel came and then revealed what that whole thing <laughs> meant unto him. So it comes directly from the fact that uh, the Israelites were supposed to farm and till the land for six years, and in the seventh year, mm -hmm. they were supposed to let the land fallow. It was the Sabbath year of God, the Sabbath year of God, the seventh year. And so <clears throat> they went on for about 490 years mm -hmm. where they didn't allow the land to fallow. So God said, I will allow my land to fallow. So because of that, so think about this, 490 years means you'd have 70 sets of seven years, right? 70 mm -hmm. times so seven. So 70 are seven. S so seven are 70. 70. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. And so, um, <clears throat> so then they went, that's when they went into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar and uh, Babylon. And so they were going to go there for 70 years so that the land could follow for 70 years and God gets back his Sabbath on the land. And so that was that was that was all extremely um uh you know prophetic mm -hmm. too. And so I'm I'm going to read Daniel <clears throat> uh chapter nine here for a second. Okay, so you are still watching Holy Health Radio. We are live on TuneIn. We are live also on Facebook. Tell a friend to tell a friend to join us live here on Holy Health Radio. Amen. Amen. All right. So Daniel chapter nine. I'll read. Um, I'll read verse verses two. Uh, let me start from verse two. So it says, "In the first year of his reign, I Daniel understood by books the number of years, whereof the word." of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he should accompli accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's, that's, that's what was happening there. Now, when you go down a little bit where the angel mm -hmm. appears to him, that's when he pretty much breaks down the prophetic meaning of this whole thing to him. And so when you go to verse 24, it says 70 weeks 
Now we've talked. Now when when you, when you read it, when you read the whole thing, you realize that it's talking about seventy weeks of years. Now when mm-hmm. we hear weeks, we we assume that we're talking about seven days, right? right? But think about the words uh, the um, week here being used as. Uh, let's just say decade, decade. for instance, mm-hmm. uh, as an example. Now, um, over here is, is saying 70 weeks of years, which means that it is uh, 70 sets of uh, seven years, seven, right. which is 490 years. So then it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city mm-hmm. to finish tran- transgress- to finish the transgression mm-hmm. and make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy One. He's talked about the whole spectrum, the whole 70 years. Mm -hmm. Now then he goes forth, and then he says, that Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, Mm Unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So that's seven weeks plus sixty plus two. Hmm. All right, that's sixty nine weeks. Sixty nine weeks. weeks of years. Uh-huh. Now I don't want to go into all that, but when you do the calculation from when the 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 king made the declaration. Right and in Nehemiah, and they they went to build the 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 temple, and not only build a temple, rebuild the the, the walls. Of the mm-hmm. city. And it's been known it this has been found by archaeologists, yeah, not just three exactly. Yeah. When you count from there, the number of days to when Jesus sat on the colt, where they shouted Hosanna. Hosanna, it's exactly the number of days with this calculated. Um, they, either there's a book out there called The Common Prince, um, and it, it, it gives a fantastic calculation of that. Check it out. But it was exactly that. Then he says later that now, now I didn't read it, but he says that after that, he will what? He will die. So you realize that there are those 69 weeks from when the, uh, you know, the declaration was made to when he sat on the cold and w- declared himself the Messiah. And then after that, there is an inherent gap. Mm-hmm. So there is a gap all the way until the 70th week. And the 70th week is what we know as, well, the, the second part of the 70th week is what we know as a tribulation. Now that gap is where the church came in. Hmm. Wow. For those who just joined us, this is Holy Hell's Radio. And tonight we are talking about rapture. We are learning something, I mean, something mysterious, something that you don't normally hear at church. And um, I think it's very, very important that you share this video with somebody. It's going to be beneficial. Yeah, so now, at this point, what are we waiting for as Christians? Are we waiting for rapture? Are we waiting for, for the second coming? What are we waiting for? Okay, so first, I, 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 want, to, I want to submit <laughs> that uh, the rapture and the second coming are not one and the same thing. Two different. They are two different things. Now, um, when, you read, um, when you read the Bible... You realize that there was there, there was a way that Apostle Paul especially spoke to the people. He spoke to them as though, you know, expect the, the rapture, rapture or the, you know, that yeah. that coming. I and think he thought the rapture was going to come very soon. Yeah. He thought he was going to be part of well, the rapture. Well, he hoped that it would be. Is in it hope year. or thought? <laughs> because the it, way he wrote first, the way he years, wrote it, yes, it's like he 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 thought that he was going to be part of it, mm-hmm. or was it his wish? I, I would say it was his wish because of okay. the imminency. There's there's a concept called imminency. The fact that we should, have, you know, wait for him and expect him at any time. Right. And so he's like, all right, I need to be ready right. when he comes. And so he was telling these people. Now you realize when he he was speaking to the Thessalonians that when some of them started, when some Thessalonians started dying, mm-hmm. they got scared. Scared. They have missed they, the rapture. Exactly. Well, not, that's nece- what, not, that's not even necessarily. That's that's the second Thessalonians uh-huh. where they thought they had missed the rapture. But uh-huh. in the first Thessalonians, they, they were scared because they didn't, they, they, they thought that, you know, those people who are, who are dead are lost forever because they expected the rapture to come in their, in their day mm-hmm. for them all to be translated. Okay. So they were go. scared. So they were scared that those people who have died won't be able to be a part of the rapture. And Apostle Paul came and said that, don't worry at all, because as a matter of fact, those people will even 
Proceed. be raptured first, and then us who are alive and are his. Wow. So that so you realize that as far as the rapture is concerned, there are really no signs, right? Mm-hmm. Because Jesus himself says that the, he doesn't know. the day and the hour knoweth no man, not even me, except the Father only. And and later on, to to the end of this, we'll talk about the Jewish wedding. Word, and how, yeah. I love how it. That relates I love the Jewish this. wedding story, linking yeah. it to the, the rapture and stuff. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. So, <laughs> it's serious. <laughs> I mean, it's serious. Yeah. First of all, you know about, I can say safely, that about 80% of Christians don't know there's a difference between mm. rapture and the second coming. I can safely say that. Mm-hmm. I mean, we put both together as if yeah. it's one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there was a difference between rapture and then uh, the second coming. And then even in between, there's millennium. Yep. So we are not even going to go... So, yeah. So we are not even in, go- in, between, <laughs> in between the in between the, the 70th week, let's just uh-huh. say that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, I mean, that's why this is a hard topic. Yeah. So uh, we should uh, take it step by step. Otherwise, okay. people are going to get very confused. Now... So anywhere from now, Jesus Christ can come. As we sit down here, mm. all of a sudden, I and uh, 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 baby Eunice will vanish and both the two of you will be left behind. <laughs> <laughs> so when that happens, are uh, uh, all eyes going to see Jesus? Uh, uh, mm. uh, like, is everybody going to see Jesus hanging in the air and then just pulling out people like a magnet? <laughs> so uh, now, the, the Bible talks about the fact that the rapture would happen the twinkling of an eye. Mm-hmm. Now, the twinkling of an eye, we sometimes think is the blinking of an eye. No, actually, it's pretty much it's related to the speed of light going uh-huh. through the through the eye. And some people have calculated it to be ten raised to the power negative twenty three oh, oh. seconds. <laughs> I mean, think about that. So mm-hmm. it's that quick. quick. And I I have a feeling that you know that 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 kind of relates to why the world would would somehow have normal goings, you know, mm-hmm. and normal everyday go- they, you know, they, they know that people are lost, but they can't really explain it. Right? And so people... Yeah, we, we will come there. We will come to that but, point, but yeah, we'll people, I want you to explain. So, not everybody will see Jesus. Nobody will see. Actually, it's those who will be raptured, who will see it? The Bible doesn't say that everyone else would. It's the people who would be raptured. The, the, the dead in Christ are going to uh, be resurrected. Yep. They're going to be raptured. Let me put it that way. So, no, let me let me come back. Here. <laughs> so, uh, as Jesus Christ comes, okay, that one doesn't have any signs. Like the second coming where he talks about there will be rumors of wars, there will be this, there will be that. For the rapture, he just hangs in the air. He doesn't really touch down. He doesn't touch down. And then down. people, the, those who are dead, uh, are the tombs going to be open or they are mysteriously going to be <laughs> the Holy Spirit Himself will do that. Will do that. Way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they will, they will go first, and then me and uh, baby Eunice will join them. <laughs> and those who are alive, those yes. who are alive, <laughs> would also be translated. Okay. Yes. So then we join, and then we we go to heaven. Now, uh, uh, those of us are up there. Some are down here. Mm-hmm. Those who are not raptured. Mm-hmm. So then, what happens for, to those? We will come back to uh, those who are up. So those who are down, then from that point, what happens? All right. So that's where the Antichrist is going to come up. Right. Okay. So the revealing of the 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 Antichrist. Um, mm-hmm. So some. So now, when you read the Bible, you realize that there isn't specifically a timeline uh, as far as you know when the rapture happens and when he will be revealed. But we know that there is going to be a revelation of mm-hmm. him and his signing a treaty with Israel. With Israel. Mm-hmm marks the beginning of the 70th week. Wow. So there's this whole gap till the Messiah was what? Till the Messiah, till the Messiah was, you know, killed the well. Till the Messiah was revealed first. Okay. That marked the, the, the end of the 70, 69th week. Mm-hmm. There's this whole gap. And then the moment that they, the, the, he signs a treaty, and again, let me read it in Daniel chapter 9. Okay. So Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Mm-hmm. So we've already read where he talked about the 69 weeks. Mm-hmm. Then in, in verse 27, it, and he says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. For one week. One right? week of seven years. One week which of is seven, seven years. Exactly. Mm-hmm. One week of years, which is seven years. And then in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Hmm. Exactly. 
in the midst of the week. Now, and this is another thing that I actually want us to take notice of as far as the difference between the first, the, the um, rapture and the and second, second coming, coming is. Okay. With the rapture, the Bible talks about the fact that Jesus himself says he doesn't know, mm -hmm. when, except the Father only. But there, this seven, 70th week is documented, right? So it talks about the fact that in the midst of the week, right, uh -huh. he's pretty much going to break the contract that they had. And he would uh, cause a, an abomination that makes the temple desolate. desolate. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Now... Is he going to be Jewish? Because he has to be somebody that the Jews are going to really trust. Somebody who is a friend of the Jews. Somebody who is going to probably present himself like he's the Messiah. Because the Jews don't see Jesus as the Messiah. Now, Jesus Christ said, I came. I told you the truth. You did not receive me. Somebody mm. is coming. Who, is, who we are going to receive? He was talking about Antichrist, obviously. Yeah, yeah. He was saying, I came with the truth. You did not see me. Somebody is going to disguise himself. Talking about now, I think that was the first time he even hinted of the Antichrist. Mm. Now, it, the, the fact that Jesus Christ even hinted. That doesn't mean he's going to be Jewish. I, I don't specifically think so. Okay. Now, the, the reason is the reason for my answer is in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. Okay. And he says that, and the, uh, so, and the people of the prince that shall come mm -hmm. shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now, who do we know in 70 AD that destroyed the city and the sanctuary? Titus. And the, Titus under and the, the Roman Romans. Empire. Right. So now this coming prince, is the, his people are the Romans. Now, let's not just think so, of it. Yeah, you're heading towards European. Well, yeah, we, we think that, but the, 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 the Roman Empire then was huge. Mm -hmm. right? It had the, the eastern leg and it had the western leg. Mm -hmm. And there, there are parts of the Middle East that are also part of that leg. Okay. And, he can and, be half-half. Well, <laughs> and you realize that uh -huh. the Bible has actually talked about the fact that he, he, the Bible has described him as the Assyrian. I don't know if you've ever seen that. And, you know, I don't want to go into the whole geography of it, but when you do the study, you realize that, you know, the people that we call Assyrians that kind of are, you know, mm -hmm. in today's world are somewhere there in the Middle East. Okay, but it's not, it's not going to be a Ghanaian. <laughs> <laughs> From the way it's going. Okay, that's, at least we know it's not going to be a Ghanaian, so that gives me some peace of mind. I mean, uh, the next show that we do, we are going to go deeper into it, but let's mm. talk about the Jewish wedding, because that is mm. going to make us really understand it. Because Jesus Christ is a bride, a Jewish bride. Mm -hmm. And the Jews have their own way of doing uh, a Jewish bridegroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. my goodness. Yes. Okay, so Jesus Christ okay. is a Jewish bridegroom. Right. So now, the same way that the Jewish the Jewish bridegroom behave is a it's a picture of who Jesus Christ is. So the Jews understand the rapture more than we do. Yeah, because they, they it's something yeah. that they go through. So we, when you understand the Jewish wedding and you understand the Jewish bridegroom and the bride and stuff mm -hmm. like that. How do you have to wait? Do you understand uh, rapture of your you do So tell us the rapture. story. Okay. okay. All right. So now the, there's, as, as part of, so a, a young man will see a lady that he wants to get married okay. to. So the first thing that he does is he goes to the house or the home of the bride or the prospective uh -huh. bride, the person that he wants to get married to. And then he goes there, signs a marriage covenant, with with them, uh, it's called the ketuba. So he goes, he goes and finds. He, he the goes. father doesn't do it. He goes with the father. Okay. He goes with the father. Now they go, they sign the marriage covenant, and they pay the bride price in the in the home. Then after that, and I'll go, I'll just go through this before I come back and then okay. talk about sure, how it sure, applies. Sure. So then after that happens, uh, he then. Uh, you know, at, at this point, they've made they've made a covenant, covenant. so to speak, okay. and so the bride goes through something called the mikvah, or the it's called the baptism of the bride, baptism okay. of the bride, where she washes it herself. All right, that's the bride. That's the bride. Okay, exactly, washes herself to pretty much set herself apart. You know, because at this point, for all intents and purposes, they are married, but the marriage has not been consummated. That's right. Okay, and so she is known to be for that specific man, 
that bridegroom that came and made a covenant with her. You know, the covenant was... Just like Joseph and Mary. Yes, like Joseph and Mary, exactly. Now, that's where the betrothal is, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so then, during this time, Mm -hmm. right, during this time, so as part of the marriage covenant, he talks about, you know, I'll take care of you, I'll do this, I'll do this, promises, pretty much, right? You're in safe hands. (laughs) Yes, exactly, you're in safe hands. And then... The, the bride is con, uh, considered betrothed. And so at this point, the groom leaves mm-hmm. to go to his father's house to prepare a room wow. for the bride. Now, there's an interesting part about this because the groom cannot make his own judgment as to when he feels the room is ready for him. But before you even go, back. I mean, it's interesting. Yeah, it because is. Before you even go, so that's why Jesus Christ was saying, I'm going to prepare a place I'm for you. So that means he has come for us and he's going to his father. So he's going to prepare a place in his father's home. Just like exactly. a Jewish guy. Oh, the Bible exactly. is so good. And so, well, you're, you're already doing the job for me. So let me just go back <laughs> then. <laughs> let me go back then. So, uh-huh. you know, we know that Jesus came, you know, Established a new testament with us. He came. He there was a new covenant that that, that he made. The, the covenant that he made was with us, the church. Mm-hmm. And then um, he paid the bride price with what? The blood. His blood. Wow. He paid the bride price with his blood, right? Expensive and bride exp- price. Extremely expensive. Wow. So when you read uh, Luke chapter twenty-two, verse twenty, you'd see that he's pretty much talking about. Now he hadn't died yet, and so he well earthly death mm-hmm. he hadn't died yet and so he talked about the you know the fact that th- this is the blood of the what's of the covenant that i'm mm-hmm. signing with you and stuff like that now so that that's that's what's uh, est- uh established in that first part of it now in the second part there is a baptism of the bride which i i believe has to do with the the washing right mm-hmm. of water by the word all right and when you read ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 you'll see that and then he said, "In my father's house, in my father's house are many mansions, right?" And he said, "I go to prepare a place for you," and that's exactly what that process was. Hmm. So then, at that time, he would leave, go to prepare a place for his bride. Now, the interesting thing that I was talking about was, he doesn't determine that it's ready. In the Jewish custom, okay, the father of the groom needs to say that the room? Mm, today, yet. This room is ready. My son is suffering. <laughs> <laughs> My son is suffering. So okay. today, this room is ready. You can go bring your bride. So King David, could that mean that Jesus Christ knows the day? But because he's talking as a Jewish bridegroom, that's why he says, I don't know the day, but the father will tell him. Well, I think if Jesus says, I don't know the day, it means that I don't know the day. I mean, like, what I'm trying to ask is, mm-hmm. could it mean that because the Jewish bridegroom it's, I mean, it's, he's, he's completely oblivious of when he's going to be told to come and bring his bride. Exactly. That's why Jesus Christ was saying that. That's why Jesus Christ says that the day and the hour... Nobody knows. No, no man, not even the angels, not me, myself, except the Father. Okay. That's in heaven, and it's in direct correlation to the Jewish wedding where the groom's father needs to declare the room... Ready. Ready for him to go receive his bride. Wow. Yeah. Serious. Yeah. And they still do that up to now? They've modified it in a little in, bit. In, 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 in a little bit, but the, the, the ground rules pretty much are the same. Now they kind of do things together and you know, So until yeah. the father tells you your room is ready, it's not ready. Until the father tells you the room is ready, it's not. So you can just go and tell the woman I'm ready. Your father says the room is not ready, so you just have to be. Yeah. Well, you know you don't see the woman during this whole time. So this time you're gone. The woman, so that there's there's a, the point here that the woman, because you don't even know the day, obviously the woman doesn't know the day. Yeah, so she's right? just waiting. So she's just waiting. So during that time, the woman prepares herself. Some even say that that's a time that the woman actually knits her own clothing. I don't know how far that is true, okay. but that, that would make sense because it has to do with, you know, the, 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 the works, the life mm-hmm. that we live, being able to make our own garments, which are the white yeah, garments the white that we're garments. going to be putting on ourselves but during this time she prepares herself mm-hmm. right she gets things together and then she mm. doesn't know the day but then when the father declares the room ready he comes with a comp- uh, you know accompaniment with with with, with an escort exactly with so the Bible oh, wow. talks about the, the the shout of the and 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 they they sound the shofar 
So when they're going to pick the bride in a Jewish custom, they, mm-hmm. they, they, they sound like it's like a trumpet. When they are getting closer, yes, like the trumpet. They sound it pretty much to, and then it's like word of mouth goes and then the woman gets to know that he is coming and so she prepares herself, so to speak, and gathers her things to get ready for him to come take her. Wow. <laughs> That's serious. Mm-hmm. So it is. now Jesus Christ is still getting his room ready. Jesus Christ. The Father is monitoring. I mean, as far as we know. Yeah. So he <laughs> right? said, I'm going to prepare a place I'm for going you. To prepare. And we know that he hasn't come to receive yeah. us. And, and so the Father is that. monitoring the room. Father is making monitoring. Sh- <laughs> making sure that the rooms are ready. And then one day, he's just going to tell him that go. Yep. And then he uh, he comes with people uh, like angels who are accompanying him mm-hmm. to come and get us. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Wow. So then he comes and then we are called. And that is where we have the five foolish virgins. Those people, mm-hmm. in the, because in the midst of the waiting for our bridegroom, this is where some people are going to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. That is also another sermon on its own. Yeah, it, it is. It so is. what is that one? Is that one people who were probably engaging in sin or people who were not really looking forward to the coming of the bridegroom? Okay. Now, um, so before I talk about that, I, I, I want to lay some, some groundwork. Now... I can't go too much into it, maybe because of time. Yeah. How much time do we have? We have about 10 minutes. Okay. And then another time when you are free, I know you are such a busy man, but we should do part two of this. We I don't know whether next should. week you have time, but because we want to do it so people will follow exactly what, what we are doing. doing. Yeah. Yeah. So if next maybe week... Maybe a more structured... We'll, we'll go over this kind of as a yeah. rem- reminder of what we did today and then sure. we'll, we'll, we'll fill in the gaps. Okay. So, um, so the, the common... If you read the Bible, the the coming seems to relate, or they, that for, that coming to receive us unto Himself seems to relate directly to the um, the, the the judgment, the first judgment, what we call the bima seat, bima seat. judgment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, because you know, but like the Bible will say things like, so that you will not be found naked at mm-hmm. His coming. Right mm-hmm. now, when you look at the Ten virgins, for instance, mm-hmm. like you talked about, uh, you realize that it has to do w- with with the fact that there were a set of people who entered somewhere, and there were a set of people who were not allowed to enter. Now they came knocking, right, and then it wasn't open to to them, mm-hmm. and so it 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 doesn't necessarily, and I, it could, but it doesn't necessarily mean that these were people who were sort of um like for 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 lack of a better term left behind physically it okay. doesn't necessarily mean that mm-hmm. right because you do realize that i mean if you are left on this earth how can you go knock mm-hmm. right and so the more you look into this you realize that it has more to do with people who were clothed upon and people who weren't and when you read First Corinthians chapter three, verse eleven to uh, I think fifteen, you realize that there is an award ceremony going on. Right. Right. There will be the bema seat. The the bema seat. He'll be there. And, and this then, is happening within that seven year period. And this is happening within that. Is, that we are talking about those period. who are above now. Correct. Those who are in heaven now. Okay. Correct. So well, so to speak. Uh-huh. Now and 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 this is that's why I, I I started by saying that it appears that that coming and the judgment seems to be pretty much around the same time. It might be that one is before the other, mm-hmm. but it seems to be around the same time. Now when when you read um uh Second Corinthians chapter five verse three. Um it talks about the fact that you wouldn't you, you wouldn't be found naked mm-hmm. at his coming. When you read things like um, the 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 you know the um, parable of the people of the talents, when you read about the, mm-hmm. the the virgins and stuff like that, you you see that there is an idea of the fact that when he comes, at that time that he's coming, the judgment is kind of happening at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've realized it. Right, right. And the people who would actually be able to pass. The exam, right? The hmm. exam that's in First Corinthians chapter three, mm-hmm. right? So your works would your now works would go through fire. Would go through fire. Now let's before that you realize that he talks about the fact that no other foundation can anybody lay but the foundation that what Christ laid. And so this is talking about people who are all what Christians who are all born again. Mm-hmm. Now your work would then be passed 
through fire, right? So it's either gold, silver, mm -hmm. or precious stones. Precious stones, or it would be like wood, hay, and stubble. Right. Now, which of these burn? Wood, hay, stubble, burn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the Bible then goes down to say that if your works don't pass through, right, fire, mm -hmm. you would, you would, if they're not able to make it out of the fire, you would suffer loss. Hmm. You go to heaven, all right. But so, the person himself uh -huh. will be saved. Now right. there is a process that the Bible says, "As by fire." What does that mean? That means you are saved, uh, but then as by fire. I have no idea what "as by fire" means. Okay. But then you can realize that there is a point where some people will be able to go through, right? Because they have wood. Uh, sorry, they have uh, gold, silver, and precious precious mm -hmm. minerals, and then they will be given, right, they'll be given then their rewards. Now, as part of the reward, you need to have had enough, and I don't want to go too much into this mm -hmm. before we talk, and so next time when we talk about this, I'd want to actually talk about this again, because I want to build a, a precedence to this, but you realize that it relates directly to the works, whether your works were spirit-inspired, whether they were for God, Flesh, yeah. and stuff like that, or whether uh -huh. they were inspired by yourself. Yeah. But it, has, it has nothing to do <laughs> That's right. exactly so, with being born again, <laughs> but you after could, you were born again, exactly. your works were. Exactly. So you could be busily doing good works, but it's not spirit-inspired. You are just trying to impress people. Exactly. And this is the danger of some, some Christians. I mean, you could be busy going up and down, even giving money. But the motive, and that is why somewhere he says that some people offered their bodies to be burnt, and uh -huh. it didn't mean anything. So it's all it all has to do with something that is spirit inspired. Spirit okay. inspired, exactly. So now uh, we are about to wrap up. But those okay. it's a, there's a part that says that those who are here on earth has to do everything according to the burdens of the antichrist. You cannot buy, you cannot sell. What does that mean? The successes and stuff. Can you throw more light on it? All right. So. The, the the you know this person would come make a treaty and like would pretty much so to speak unite the world right explain, would he explain the mystery of the rapture why, why have people vanished I don't know the Bible doesn't say it yeah, because that's but, what I'm guessing. yeah because well, before he can unite the world and make sense to the world maybe he has maybe to he probably tell a lie, a lie. Right? that's right a big it, lie. it's it's very possible that he could tell a lie but. But uh, dur during that time, and uh, as a matter of fact, let me bring this point. If peop people relate the virgins, right, the foolish virgins to, um, people relate the foolish virgins to the tribulation, right? Some mm -hmm. people were taken away and some people would remain in the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. If that was the tribulation, how are they going to buy without the money? Exactly. Right? Think about it. Mm -hmm. Because these people are virgins, which speaks of the church. Mm -hmm. Right, but they went to buy oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I think that this this that whole thing has to do with the the process that's being spoken of uh, as as by fire, mm -hmm. right? Figuratively, but during that time you will not be able to buy anything. Basically, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. It's even serious than social security card. Exactly. Everything was e centered everything. around everything. You can't buy anything without you having a mark on 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 your arm on your forehead bearing his mark and so that kind of suggests to you that the rapture happens sometime prior to to that hmm. and, <laughs> so then it means that it will be it will almost be impossible for any christian someone who pretends to be a christian and they don't make it in a in a rapture to survive because now you have to survive on your own terms the Holy Spirit has been lifted from, from us. And now, the, your only way of going to heaven, practically, is to die for Christ. Pretty much. Because if you don't accept the sex, sex, sex mark, you are going to be killed. And if you don't accept it, you are going to heaven. So to speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd actually want us to lay groundwork before we before talk about we, some of those things. Yeah. That's, that's, that's why I'm, yeah. I'm saying that. But yeah, so to speak. I mean... And it's 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 interesting, isn't it's it? It's interesting, yeah. very interesting. It is. And then this guy, for the first three years, the whole world believes in him. Mm. And I, I I read that he's going to do some some powerful miracles. Extremely, yeah. I think at some point you even be murdered. I mean, but he will survive it. Yeah, one of his heads was be shot. Was, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. When he when in Revelations it talks about one of the one of his heads was pretty much dead. And, and it came alive. Now, when you read Revelations, you realize it's more that, like resurrection. <laughs> so I mean, he's he's I mean, he's imitating Jesus. 
Yeah, and he, he wants, comes in. A, he comes on a white horse and everything. Yeah. So you know how it yeah. seems almost as though. I mean, the word antichrist that one necessarily mean that it's against Christ. It's mm-hmm. a form of replacing Christ. Right, a false Christ. A, a false Christ. Yeah. So he's just trying to convince the world that he is the Messiah who has been promised a long time ago. Exactly. And that is why he's trying to imitate the resurrection. Yeah, exactly. And that Probably convinces. Possibly that I've never looked at it oh, that yeah, way. Absolutely. And that is why people mm-hmm. are going to put their trust in him after surviving the gunshots and the wounds and stuff, and they saw that he survived all these things. And I mean, the way he speaks, he's able to make sense out of the rapture. What else can't he explain? All right. I mean, he's going to convince yeah. you to take the mark. Once you take it, you are Very, very big possibility. Oh, yeah. And if you don't take it too, you are going to be... To- I mean, and I, from what we are reading, it means you are going to be tortured. Mm. You are going to go through, like, painful, slow death. Oh, yeah. So why won't people accept Christ now? Mm. Why, 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 I mean, can David tell me, why is it so hard for people to accept Christ? It's it's, <laughs> it's so interesting, but it's it just it's it's at the end of the day it's blindness. Which when you read the Bible relates to pride. When you read the the Bible, the the word the word blindness and pride kind of are it's to flow and to flow. Uh-huh. It, it and you realize that they come from the same background. Right. And so you realize that you know the the, the god of this world, Satan, has blinded people. He's serious. You know what I mean? He's 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 blinded people with pride. I mean, think about when you go to talk to somebody about Christ. They think they have it all. I don't need right, right. You and don't need. I don't. I don't need Christ. I have everything already together. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! Okay, and, and, I mean, and, and we have a lot so to talk about. I mean, when it comes to some of these things, because even the millennium, people don't know you. Jesus Christ will come and live on earth for a thousand years. Mm. He will physically come like all of us here and live with human beings for 1,000 years in the millennium mm. before eternity will begin. Mm. And this is something that most people are oblivious of. They have no idea that we will come back here on earth, stay here on earth. Mm. And that is that is it. Yeah. And then, how is he going to break, break his tra- tra- treaty with Israel? So, the Bible talks about when you read uh, Matthew chapter 24, uh-huh. Jesus says, when you see the abomination that makes oh, what, yeah. desolate, uh-huh. That's when you should flee. That's when the treaty is broken, right in the middle of the seven-year period, right? Right in the middle of the seven-year period. It's an abomination that makes desolate. Now, if you read the the New Testament, sorry, the Old Testament, uh-huh. abomination spoke of a a an, an image that was worshipped, an idol, mm-hmm. and so um, you'd realize that it's it relates to him putting an idol in the term in the holies of holies. Really? Yes. And when you, when you do a careful study, you realize that that's, that's what it centers around. Now, then that's when the Jews would say, mm. Impossible. Yeah, because previously they would, they, they would, they would have somehow had a, half a thought that, man, this could be the Messiah, right? Because he's a world leader, mm-hmm. all the people. Charismatic, just like they were expecting Jesus to do. Just like they were to expecting To conquer the Roma. To, exactly. Yeah, and he was not conquering them. <laughs> so he's going to fit yeah. into the kind of Messiah. He is going wow. to fit. And so now, to, to kind of give uh, a, a, a brief summary, because I've, I've realized that things are, have been all over the place, but yeah. so there would be the, there would be the rapture. Mm-hmm. Then there would be the seven-year period. Now, the first, the, 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 the second part of it is where the tribulation is. Right, the second three and a half years is where the tribulation is, which which is why I say that as far as the rapture is concerned, there is nothing. It's imminent, imminent. I M M, imminent, because we have no idea when it's coming. But you realize that the second coming is completely documented. Wow. There is a seven year period. In the middle of that, he will break the treaty, and there are three and a half years more. The Bible describes it as forty two months or a year. Oh, sorry, uh, time times and half a time. Uh, and also, uh, what uh, I think, 1,260 days. And so from that time, we know exactly how much more time that is going to be left before Jesus comes of course. So and touches is, on Mount Olivet. That's why I don't understand those who talk about, uh, how do they call it? We are, we, you and I are pre-millennial, millennialists. Uh, is that how they call it? Pre-millennial, yes. Why, why do some people pre, believe that? Pre-trip. pre 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 uh uh-huh. Why do some people believe that God would allow the bride of Jesus to go through the, the, the tribulation? <laughs> There's actually one time that I heard somebody make an, a fantastic statement. He's like, those who say that the, the bride uh-huh. itself is going to go through the tribulation before Jesus comes and then saves us, it's like saying that, oh, hi, honey, let me marry you, give you a 
big whooping, uh-huh. and then we'll go have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. See what you I mean? know what I mean? Think about it. That way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just marry you someone. Human, human, yeah. <laughs> you marry someone, and you're uh-huh. like, let me give you one heck of a... Because the, the, the tribulation is inflicted, right? <laughs> inflicted yeah. from above, yeah. right? yeah. And so it's like, let me let me give you one heck of a whooping and let's go have dinner. Have dinner. Let, you know what I mean? Sense. It does not make sense. Yeah, wow, yeah. wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Kwame Kwame says, we watch in power, God bless. He says, I'm learning power. Another says, I'm going to prepare a place. Amen. Wow. So, I mean, so far, for those who just joined us, we've been talking about Jesus Christ being a Jewish, the true Jewish uh, bridegroom. We are the true Jewish bride. And um, Jesus Christ will be coming to pick us up to where he is. The father has to give him permission. The father has to say that the room is ready. Right now, that is all that he's doing. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He's preparing the place. When it's ready, he's not going to say it. His father is going to say, your room is ready. Go and bring your bride. Mm. We are the bride. We who have believed in Christ. Mm. He will come together with the angels, just like a Jewish wedding, where the bridegroom goes with some people who are supporting, just like bride, the the bride, the the bride, the groomsmen, so, so, so to tough. speak. Yeah. yeah. So he comes, and then with, within a twinkle of an eye, we are raptured, even together with those who were dead. Mm. We are raptured. We go and join him in heaven for a period of seven years. Now, during, during that seven, a period of seven years, we are rejoicing. We are having like honeymoon, a type of honeymoon, right? <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, marriage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we are enjoying yeah, the spiritual, happening. spiritual honeymoon. Yeah. And then that's where also the bima seat is right the, the bima seat judgment would happen right and then yeah. people will be awarded based on what they have done what and they what they, yeah, they, have, they were supposed to do and then here the antichrist is seven years period seven years is going on there seven years is going here the antichrist steps on the scene and explain the mysterious thing that has happened what we call rapture he's able to make sense that some scientific yeah, organic, that actually makes sense or, i've never yeah, thought about it organic that arrangement collided with the cosmic <laughs> bodies which resulted he just comes up and gives some explanation which makes sense to people yeah. they begin to follow him he begins to do wonders because he's an antichrist he's going to copy christ and he's going to fit into the jewish description of a messiah mm. just like they wanted jesus christ to do and there were times that they were even forcing him mm. they wanted to make him by force came this guy is going to fit into it the jews are going to buy i mean they're going to love him mm. and finally they have seen their messiah yeah. the one they were looking for he's going to make them the head the head nation like he's going to give them everything they want within that seven years he breaks the treaty within three and a half years he begins to show them so that means that there's going to be a temple in israel I mean, there's going there to be a has, ex, That's an ex, ex, extremely yeah, that's good point. Right. There has to be a temple in Israel, which today there is. No. There's a temple institute that are working on a building the temple, but it's not yet there. Right. But it needs to be there for the abomination that makes desolate to that's actually a, happen. I think they have to have some particular animal type. I read something on a Jewish uh, website where before a temple is built, you have to have some strange animal I've forgotten. Mm-hmm. And I think they just discovered that type of animal. They have to kill some particular lamb. It has to be white and some description, some strange description. And they recently found that type of animal. Oh, wow. And once they have it, they will start building the temple. And once the temple is ready, then that means anything is going to happen any moment from now. Mm. So within the three and a half years, he begins to show him his true colors. Mm. I mean, if you are a deceiver, one day your true colors will show. <laughs> so that's when he goes into the temple, defies the temple. Like you said, he goes into the Holy of Holies. Mm. And then he defiles it, probably uh, desolation, uh, yeah, the abomination. The abomination, yeah. So an he idol. might build an idol there. And then the Jews begin to see that, no, no. they have been deceived. Uh, Jesus, um, as I would never, never do, do this. that. Yeah. And then they begin, that's why Jesus Christ said, uh, you will not accept me until you say that blessed is he who mm-hmm. comes in the name of the Lord. So at that point, they begin to realize that the, Jew, that the Messiah himself was Jesus Christ. They begin to, their heart begins to get ready now. God, they know that they have been deceived. So we did that next three and a half years. They are going, it's going to be torture. And then those... He's going to torture the Jews, right? Now for the Jews to reject him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 uh, you, you, when you read the Bible, uh, Hitler killed one out of every three Jews. Uh-huh. When you read the Bible, it says that two out of every three Jews wow. will be killed. And so That is after the first three and a half years. That, yes, it's gone. Yes. And so that, that, and then it, it mixed in there with the tribulation, it's, it's, it's going to be... Wow. It's going to be... And then, yeah, I'm trying to put everything you have put into perspective so that, because I was asking the questions, I was so eager to know so much, and I was just asking the questions, so I'm putting everything that you have said so far, 
in their rightful perspectives. And then, now, because the Jews have seen who he is, he begins to show them his true colors. Like you're saying, kills every... I mean, he's going to be the one who's going to kill the most Jews. I mean, that in, that, that in, in, in conjunction with the, uh, with the tribulation. Tribulation. Be... And then those who wouldn't accept his mark also, he begins to kill them, torture them and stuff. Those, yes. Yeah. So in between this torturing and this confusion is when Jesus Christ is going to come. Because in seven years, he's going to catch up with him along the line as he continues to misbehave. So yeah, pretty much at the end of, of that three and a half years... Yes. Uh, Jesus comes and interrupts the, uh, the, the Amageddon, Amageddon, right? He comes so the, touches on all of it. He's good. So, we are going to end at where Jesus <laughs> now comes. Now, the yes. Father tells him, your room is ready. Mm -hmm. Go and bring your bride. Now, Jesus Christ is going to come. That one, physically, people are going to see him. He's going to physically touch exactly where he left. So, he left on Mount Olivet and told the disciples that I'm going. And then, uh, the angel came and said, this Jesus that you saw him live will come in the same way. The same Mount Olivet in Israel. He's going to touch that same Mount Olivet. Yeah, cool. That mountain is going to split into two. Jesus Christ is going to come. So next week, it's going to be interesting. Because <laughs> that one, Jesus Christ has now come physically. Right. And then the millennium and other things where people are going to live for so many years. The lion and the snake will be playing. You can put your, <laughs> your hand in the mouth of a lion. It will not bite you. You can pick a big snake and hang it around your neck. For that thousand years, we are going to enjoy before eternity is going to be. I mean, these things are so complex. Mm -hmm. So if you are not understanding it, it's okay. I mean, call King David. He would explain it better. <laughs> if you are confused, it's okay to be confused. Yeah, because it's, it's yeah. so complex. It, it, it's it so is. complex. But is. as you continue to listen to it, you are going to catch it. At least if you understand the rapture, that is better. You have any final words? Yeah, I, I just, I think, I think my main thing is, you know, the, the whole, the whole point of some of these things is to kind of incite people to yeah. be able to do their own studies. You know, don't, don't take my word for yeah. it. You we know, know we like, know in bits. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. be, be like the Berean Christian. That's right. Go in there. You uh -huh. know, I, I hope I've been able to, you know, <laughs> uh, we have been able to incite some <laughs> curiosity in someone for them to go out there and study the word for themselves, you know, study and know exactly what what, what, what this is about. Right. You know, and 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 uh, and also to and next week when when we talk about this now i we'll talk a little more about judgment. And how that relates directly to our lives mm -hmm. as, as as Christians. And then you would explain also, because that was the first time I heard from you, the, the goats and the sheep that you said it refers to nations. So yes. nations are also going to, going to be judged. Nations I never knew are, that. Yes. And that was an eye-opener for me. Thank yeah. you so much. I thought only individuals would be judged. Mm. I didn't know nations. nations. Matthew, also... 20, Matthew, Matthew 25. Thank yeah. you so much. And Amos, they can, Amos says, Thank you, David and Elder Sumwa. I have learned a lot today. We have also, I have also learned a lot from David. David, I mean, you are wonderful. Yeah, and you, Holiko should be God very lucky you. to have you as a <laughs> husband. Yeah. That wonderful lady from Holy Child. Okay. So, people of God, we are grateful. Next week, Jesus Christ is going to tag down on Mount Olivet. So many big things are going to happen from there. So tell somebody to join us next week, God willing. Uh, Mr. Isaac Pinto is the CEO of Holy House Radio, the man controlling the machines for us. My name is Elder Besson. Thank you so much. Catch you. God bless.